Hi everybody and welcome to a very very early demo of the ProBuilder VR for Unity Editor VR. Uh, we're going to take a look at how these tools work, how they work uh, in the Unity Editor VR system right now and also some ideas we have for the future uh, and hopefully we'll get some ideas from you guys as well. So number one, uh, I'll try to keep these controllers in the view at all times. It's a little bit tricky since I can't see what it actually looks like on the screen while I'm staring through a VR. Uh, all sorts of things uh, that are a little more interesting with doing VR. So, uh, number one, you want to open up the ProBuilder VR tools. Use the hand that you want to have the tools on. In my case, I'll use the right. And reach over to your left hand and click on the, or use the, the main trigger to click on the Unity icon there. And this brings up their uh, fancy cube menu thing. Uh, to the right, currently, you have the ProBuilder section. Uh, click on Create Shape, and that'll bring up the standard ProBuilder tool. So here we have it. Uh, we're working on the UI, trying to figure things out, but right now there are just two basic buttons. The first one shows a shape, and that is create shape mode. Hooray. Uh, the second one shows sort of a, maybe a face or a triangle or something, and that means editing, uh, editing mode. Um, editing mode is going to edit things. Create shape is going to create shapes. Pretty simple. Uh, while you're in create shape mode, which is the default, that's what it pops up into, you'll see that you have this grid that shows up whenever you're hovering over items. Um, or number one, if you're hovering over the, uh, the bottomless abyss, it's just going to show the grid uh, on your ground plane. And that's going to depend on how you have your VR set up. Um, also, you'll see that the grid itself shows up uh, as larger or smaller based on distance. And so if I'm hovering it over an object, also that grid will show up on the object, which we'll see how that works for building in a moment. Um, and it's going to be a much smaller grid as you get closer, so you can build more fine detailed items close up uh, and much larger at distances. So you're not moving by or creating tiny little things in the distance, which just wouldn't really work. And then you're not stuck to that super large grid up close. So this is a bit of a uh, um, feature in testing, a um, bit of a compromise on both ends, but we think it works out pretty well. Um, something that, that will probably change or adapt in the future. Anyway, uh, let's create something. So I'll go far out. Number one, I'd recommend to everybody if you're building, um, I like to first just kind of drag out and create a giant ground plane. Uh, I kind of already have here, but I'll create just a bit more. Ta-da, build. So really simple just to build stuff. If I'm clicking on, or hovering on an item, you'll see something like uh, here where it shows, again, the grid over it. Click and, or sorry, by clicking I mean holding down the, uh, the trigger button, the main trigger. And as you move, it's going to snap to the nearest grid point until I have what I like. Then I've released the trigger button, and now I'm doing the second part of the construction. Uh, let me try and keep the uh, controller in view. So you can see those blue guidelines there, I'll try to aim my head at it, are going to help you line things up. Uh, since in VR it's a little trickier, you can't use isometric views and fancy things like that. Um, and click again to finalize what you've, uh, what you've built. Pretty simple. Uh, let's say you want to edit something. Uh, click on the, or use your left hand, and use the ray to click on the face edit mode. And now when I hover over an item, it's going to highlight the face. So if I wanted to pull this out, I can hover over it, and then hold down the trigger. And you'll see this line coming out. Um, out from the face in the direction you're going to move it. And as I rotate the controller and move, you'll see that the uh, face moves along that line based on where I'm pointing at it. Um, so this isn't one-to-one uh, -one movement, so as in if I'm moving my arm one meter, it won't actually move with it in that way. We have a different method I'll show in a moment. This is more for building at a distance. For example, if I want to move this face up, um, using my own physical arm, unless you're very tall, I could only get about a meter up. Uh, but using this method, I can move it quite easily. And then also, up close, I can still do the same thing. So kind of like the grid, uh, it's a good compromise between um, uh, one or the other, basically. <laughs> uh, well, no need to, to really dwell too much on that. Anyway, that's how you move items. Uh, and a second option is the direct one-to-one -one editing. So if I were to say I want to move this block down here up a little ways, and I want to be real precise about it, instead I can reach into it and see how it turns purple when the cone uh, intersects it here. Now I can hold down the trigger and grab it and pull it straight up using just one-to-one -one translation by moving. And again, I can grab the side and do something similar here. 
So this you might prefer when you're up close and working with items. Uh, we'll probably look into enabling it also uh, at a distance in case you really want to just move this one-to-one, -one, which might be a bit of a, uh, 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 not often used, but hey, if it's useful, it's useful for sure. Um, lots of things we're working on, of course. Your feedback would be great uh, in helping us decide where to go with a lot of these things. Uh, most things in VR, uh, we're finding out the hard way, as many of you probably have. Um, you never know what it's going to be until you really try it a few times. Uh, it's pretty new, uh, new stuff. So, you've got that option. You've got the standard option for movement. And then the create controls. So all together, these work pretty well for a nice, smooth creation system um, without getting too perfectionate. Uh, we're working towards the future, some items like uh, vertex and edge snapping. That's going to be really handy right now, unless you have a really steady hand. It's a little tricky to get right on a spot at a distance. Um, so we're working towards that. Uh, more shapes, obviously, uh, more than just cubes. You'd be able to create uh, full editing options for things like uh, edges and vertices, cutting stuff, all that fun stuff. Obviously, there's a lot that ProBuilder can do. Uh, it's a pretty much complete modeling tool. We like to get a lot of that built into a PBVR. Um, but we're starting simple, so we want to make sure just the basics work. And probably the most important thing to add in is we're also looking into some sort of um, uh, better locomotion methods, which may end up coming down to, to Unity implementing. But the big problem with, with building stuff currently is uh, moving yourself around it and building it. It uh, might be nice to get up to a bird's eye view and such sometime. So anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, this is PBVR as it stands on February 14th. Um, 2017. We've got a lot more coming up. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, definitely download it. It's free for everyone to try at this point. Um, and if you're watching this at GDC also, thanks. Shout out to Unity for showing it off there for us um, as part of their booth and just in general helping us get this working. It's been a lot of fun. So see you guys in future videos. A lot more coming.